decades-old folk tale surrounding a deranged murderer killing those who celebrate Valentine's Day turns out to be true to legend when a group defies the killer's order and people start turning up dead. That's the setting for 1981's cult classic, My Bloody Valentine, a slasher film about a cave miner with um, a pickaxe to grind. Get it? Get it? <laughs> Welcome to the Scare Guy Show, a place where we as filmmakers discuss horror films, haunt events, and all things that are scary fun. My name is Jim Fry. I am a screenwriter and one of your horror hosts for this uh, excursion into the macabre. Who do I have up here? My, my co-host tonight, Cheeseman. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's Cheeseman, one of the founding members of the Scare Guy, also screenwriter and horror fan. All right. And this week we are talking with Anthony Massey, a documentary film and special event producer and the creator of a new tabletop game based on My Bloody Valentine, the 1981 version. And we also talk with horror author and filmmaker Armando Munoz, who wrote the official tie-in novel for My Bloody Valentine, for which, this is kind of cool, he had the blessings of the movie's director, George Mahalka, who actually wrote the foreword to the book. Guys, I'm so glad to have you both with us on the show. Welcome to the Scary yes. Guy Show. So happy Thanks to be for here. Us. And yeah. um, happy Valentine's Week, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, be a we'll, bloody good week. <laughs> it's gonna be bloody good. And and we were just talking before the show. We're gonna wait a little bit later, but like your Valentine's uh, week just started off even better ten minutes ago. But we'll talk about that just a little bit later. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I told him Armando. <laughs> Armando, <laughs> he told us the secret. I think that's so great. I think it's so great. Let's just say you guys are conquering those holidays, aren't you? So, anyways, we're going to um go ahead and and we've had Anthony on the show before. He's always so much fun. But Anthony, if you don't mind, just kind of telling uh, the viewers and the listeners a little bit about yourself and what it is you do. Yeah, I mean, my life is horror movies. Um, I primarily do retrospectives on, um, you know, horror movies. I did uh, Halloween, 25 Years of Terror. We did the Scream documentary, Still Screaming. We did His Name Was Jason. Nice. We did one for Paramount last year called Unknown Dimension, which is the Paranormal Activity series. We did Psycho, a whole bunch of them. Um, but uh, lately I've been getting into uh, board game design, which is a very unexpected thing, but it's been a lot of fun. And uh, we did a Silent Night, Deadly Night board game, and that's what led to um, my Bloody Valentine. So it's just like a new adventure in horror, and it's a blast. And my partner is um, uh, Fright Rags. So if you're familiar with Fright Rags, like Ben yep. Scribbins over there, and they're amazing art, Justin Osborne and Joe, Joe Allard. Uh, we are working together to create like a new way to experience the movie, much like the novel. Like you can add this to your, um, you know, Valentine's Day every year and have it be a part of your tradition. I mean, what do you do on Valentine's Day? You watch a movie, you go to dinner, you know, whatever. Now you can kind of play a game. So so we're finding filling this little niche and it seems to be working. People really, really love the games. So awesome. that's what I've been doing lately. Yeah. And we're going to look about a little bit deeper into the game in just a minute. Armando, thank you for being on the show tonight. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what what folks would know know you from. Well, um, right now I'm primarily a novelist uh, with my bloody Valentine, the novel. But prior to that, I had three others. Porter was my debut novel in 2015. I followed that a year later with Turkey Day, which is a Thanksgiving slasher um, <laughs> novel. And then I did a sequel to it, which was an epic book, like twice the length of. The original book and it's called turkey kitchen and it was just it's a real go for the throat just <laughs> slasher epic so you know i have some experience with the holiday horror prior to that um i was also a filmmaker still am a filmmaker screenwriter director had a lot of short films which played around the world for a decade or so um including titles like <laughs> the killer crapper mime <laughs> after midnight panty kill uh, the Terrible Old Tran and Pervula. Now, Pervula is also my alter ego as a DJ. And I've been DJing around Los Angeles um, for a while. But due to the pandemic, I'm now DJing weekly online. I have an online virtual dance club nightclub on Zoom. And oh, that's cool. I usually perform every Friday night. But we are open two or three nights a week with a whole roster of DJs and I bring horror themes and sets like you see behind me to every show that we do. Now, where, so wait, I, wait, behind you, where, where are you sitting right now? 
I'm deep in the Hanager mine, yeah. <laughs> Valentine Bluffs. And I've kind of been here for the last half of a year, basically. So uh, <laughs> I still haven't quite come out, but you know, I'm having, you know, we're having a party down here in the mine. And I do think there might be, <laughs> I think Harry Warden might be down here though, because he left me a Valentine. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the legend's real, right? Wait, wait, hold it up. Hold it up. Let's take a look at that. That's I mean, fantastic. It's, it's like glistening I mean, and wet. <laughs> <laughs> he must have just been here because this is wet. I'm not going to touch it. It's a warning. It's, it's a warning. You know what happens. <laughs> it's like just the 14th draws near. <laughs> a couple of people want to say hello real quick. Um, Christelle De Desir says hello, says hi. And then hello. from down in Mexico, Lily Scholar. So always glad, glad to see Lily. Lily, um, I didn't know you liked horror movies, but glad you turned tuned in for us tonight. <laughs> Lily's always a good sport. Um, hey, I'm going to, uh, before we open it up to questions with Luke, I do want to uh, just kind of, I have a couple shots here because you guys had a really cool event this last weekend. Um, can you kind of tell us what was going on and where this event happened? Yeah, this was at Dark Delicacies um, store in Burbank and their po popular hotspot for autograph signings. And, you know, they're a specialty store, bookstore. They sell all kinds of horror related items. And I've done a whole bunch of signings there for my previous. There's my Halloween documentary. That was yeah. that was my first signing. That was huge. It was like a line down the block. And um, so I always knock on their door and I'm like, hey, Sue and Del. Like, it's Del Howison and it's Del and Sue Howison. And I was like, you know, hey, you know, let's do another signing. And so they did one for this because it was the board game plus the novel. Yep. And we asked a couple of the cast members to join us. Um, Rob we, Stein and Ellen. There and the, yes, there they are. And um, they were in probably one of the, I mean, I think the, probably the best kill in the in the whole movie is when Helen, Ellen is there impaled on a, a miner's shower head. And it's super gruesome. Probably one of the best kills in all of horror, in my opinion. It's did just, we see it though? Did we want? Did we see it? Or oh, they reenacted it. They totally. They they actually. She got up on the chair and <laughs> lucky kissed him. You know. Uh, but yeah, they just had a lot of fun with it, and so the fans were bringing their My Bloody Valentine original movie posters, and they were signing those, and you know, it's just this big hug for My Bloody Valentine, and so it was just so fun. It was like three hours, right? Armando was like, it was just About nonstop. Was just, yeah, it was great. It was great to see everybody. Lily is a fan of horror. That's very cool. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, somebody backstage with us, Mr. Mark Chavez, says, hi, Armando. Hello, Anthony. Oh, Mark. Mark. Hey, I know Mark. How are you doing, just my buddy? Just go bath art. <laughs> can, I just, <laughs> look, can I take a second to plug Mark here? Yes. You have got to say, I have this. Uh, Mark, you've got to watch. This is something he made for me. It's, he does these 3D art. Let me pull that up. 3D oh, shadow cool. boxes. Oh, Nice. And I, you know, you guys, I've told you about my Scream Comes Home event. It's hard to see because it's like a flash here, but that's good. Right Mark, there. Mark creates these incredible shadow boxes and it sits on my desk. Mark, I think of you every day because I see this and <laughs> um, he creates these. So it's Disco Bloodbath is his company. And you've got to go, if you're ever at a convention, and you see Disco Bloodbath, he's got like any horror movie you can imagine. He does these 3D, um, it's a piece of art. And I have another one he did for me too. Um, so anyway... There you go, Mark. I'm, I'm telling you, there are, it, I don't know how good the it looked on camera, but it is a piece of art. It is amazing. I've so, seen those. Those are pretty yeah. impressive. He says, thank you, Anthony. He I really have three of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have, I have, oh, um, yeah. You have uh, Prom Night? I have Halloween 2. I okay. have a Prom Night, which is signed by uh, the director, Paul Lynch, and a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. But they're uh, not down here in the mine with me at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be showing those off too. Right, right. I'm, I, I have to wonder bloody if Valentine. he's done any my bloody Valentine art yeah. in the past. I would expect that that. Oh, I'm sure. I, just, I recently saw something Mark that Mark he, he posted about my bloody Valentine. Just oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that was cool about this weekend, I do have a copy of Fangoria magazine, oh, okay. and the uh, novelist fe an interview with you is uh, Armando is featured right here in the back. Um, when when was this? When did when did this interview take place? And what new details are in here that we haven't read yet? No, <laughs> it, 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 that took place a couple months ago, but it just came out. It hit um, it hit the newsstands this month, um, and the subscription ones. Actually, last month in January, those uh, that issue came out, and it's just a beautiful. Like I can't believe it. It's a beautiful three page spread where both George Myalka and I get to preview the book, and it's with 
the background of the beautiful Gary Pullen cover art that they used on all three pages. Yeah. Uh, it's just incredible. And, and an mean? honor to be in the issue sandwiched between Megan and Cocaine Bear. Like, right. you know, <laughs> this is horror today and I'm right there with them. <laughs> so I, I, I'm very thrilled. Very thrilled. It was great. I mean, it was a three page yeah. spread, which was for a book. Like, I thought they were going to do like a half page, like mentioned, but they, I mean, they seem to really, like, I think the enthusiasm for the book is obvious. I mean, we sold out and the pre order is gone. And just this morning, I was talking to the licensor about what to do for the second printing. And, you know, it's, it's just, I think we, I think Armando did something really great by, it's not just a, like a retelling of the movie. He's added all the deleted scenes, new characters. There's a dog in it. You know, there's like all these different things that he, he pulled together. And so it's just a, it's, it just served up so much. It's, all right. Yeah. That's, uh, hey, let's pull Luke in. Hey, Cheeseman. Cheeseman on the couch. And I know that Luke is uh, eager to ask some questions here. Well, I just want to f know, first of all, just like, where did your love of this film begin? Like, do you remember the first times you saw this or was this something you continued to watch like every month with friends and like, yeah, what's, what's both your backgrounds with the film personally? Did you guys have the worst Valentine's days ever growing up or what? <laughs> uh -huh. Go ahead, Armando. Well, the most well for me, I, I first um, encountered it on VHS in 1985. And I was very aware of it when it was released in 1981, but I was way too terrified to see it. I was too young. Um, and I had experience because the prior year in 1980, um, at eight years old, I happened to go see Friday the 13th on opening night in the theater. And my mom drove me and my babysitter got me in because she was old enough. So, you know, I was allowed <laughs> to, I was allowed to see what I wanted and I chose that. And I had nightmares for years. And from that point on, it took a couple of years before I would watch a slasher film again. And so when those previews, you know, for my bloody Valentine hit the television, I was just like, no way. I'm not seeing like nothing scared me more than theme day slashers by Paramount Pictures. I mean, that's what Friday the 13th was. So I made the association. I was like, no way. But by 85, I was becoming a total horror fan thanks to Stephen King and Fangoria. I got hooked and I faced my fear. And of course, my bloody Valentine already had a reputation at that point. So I went and rented it and it was great. And it was terrifying. You know, I saw it luckily at an age where I was young enough to be scared by it, as well as all of those um, films from the slasher films of that era. They all terrified me, <laughs> which is great because I can still, um, I can still channel that feeling and that fear that I had, you know, when I was young and I apply that to, to what I do now. But yeah, it, I always loved it from the moment I saw it and it gr grew to appreciate it more when a lot of that lost footage made its way back into um, the edit. So it's, um, again, for decades, I've been a, a champion of the film. So this feels great <laughs> to be, awesome. be here, to get to live there for, you know, a while within that narrative. Nice. Hmm. So Anthony, but what made it, what made you want to create a, a, a board game out of this? That, um, Cause I don't know. I watched it. Didn't seem very gamified to me. I, I'm really, <laughs> no, I'm super curious about the gaming aspect of the film. Yeah. Well, interestingly, you'll notice that in a lot of slasher movies, there's a lot of the same kind of cliches and tropes and rules. Is like there's usually a killer. He's usually trying to get somewhere. You know. There's usually um, some cop. You know, like in Silent Night Deadly Night, it was Officer Barnes. You know, in Halloween, there's Sheriff Brackett and Officer Hunt. You know, and they're looking for this killer. They're trying to stop the killer. And uh, and same thing in My Bloody Valentine. You've got um, Chief Newby who is running around town trying to find this killer who is basically on his way to the Valentine's Day dance. He's going to kill everybody. And so when you, for me, there's like a game should tell a story. You know, mm -hmm. there should be a theme to the game. I mean, checkers, maybe not. You know, it's just like these little objects. You're like jumping and all that. And um, but for a slasher board game, I think the games should feel like the movie. Um, and so for, you know, my bloody Valentine, it fit the same kind of, um, recipe that we had did 
for Silent Night, Deadly Night. And so it just lent itself. The whole story just gave itself to the board. You know, it was just like, here we are. This is this is this is our movie, our uh, game. And it feels like the movie because like, you know, when you're drawing, you're pulling out the cards, you know, there's little scenes from, you know, the cards on there. And mm -hmm. this one, you know, this is like, you know, TJ Warren's, you know, the rule, no woman, what, no women in the mind, move your <laughs> back to the Valentine's Day dance. Um, you know, we've got happy, happy's the crazy bartender. And, uh, you know, so as you're pulling the card, you're seeing scenes from the movie, you're kind of experiencing, you're experiencing the movie in your own way or in a new way. And you get to battle Harry Wharton. You get to chase him, land on his face and go face to face with him. And you can use one of the little weapons, which is, you know, there's like, this is the nail gun in it, you know, like, the, and they're metal, you know, they're like, they're like real, like metal. Uh, this is the pickaxe, of course, you got to have the pickaxe. And, uh, <laughs> you know. and so, and it's really like high quality. One thing that I'm, I'm working with a factory um, in China that the quality is insanely amazing. I mean, what they did, like the board looks amazing too. Um, like this is the board for my bloody Valentine. Nice. You know? nice. I mean, it's got like foiling and I know my light here is really crappy, but like, you know, it's just, they do just such a really great job. And these uh, illustrations are from Justin Osborne over at Fright Rags. It's yeah, just, you know, it's a collector's item, you know? I mean, it's on top of it being a functional game. Um, that plays differently and unpredictably every time. That's another thing we made sure that when you you can play it, you could set it up quickly. You don't spend an hour reading the instructions. These are key holidays. You know, Silent Night, Deadly Night. You don't want to spend an hour reading the instructions. Same thing with my, you know, with Valentine's Day. So you take the game out, you set it up in five minutes, and you're playing. And you can play ten minutes, fifteen minutes. The game's over, and then you can do another one, and you'll see a different result. Um, you know, how many players? One to four. You can actually play it completely by yourself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, like, for instance, say, say the four of us are playing, you know, a couple of things could happen. Harry could take all of us out. Because, see, all you're trying to do is to stop Harry from getting from one place to another. He's starting up here at the Valentine Bluff sign, and he's trying to get down to here, which is the Valentine's Dance. So he's trying to go from here to here. And he has a very specific path he's traveling and you're traveling around the board, trying to land on his space, collecting weapons, you're rolling dice, you're drawing cards, you're facing other obstacles, obstacles, there's roadblocks, you know, and so all you're trying to do is to stop him from getting there and you all kind of have the same goal. Um, and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. He'll take all of us out in one game or in the next game, like one of us will catch him pretty quickly. And so that's the fun of the game. That was the challenge. Designing it was... Designing it was not very easy because, you, you know, the one you, you, we all buy a game and we experience the game and we don't think about the design of it. But I, I've gone through it and it's really, really time de uh, demanding and you have to test play it. You have to test, test, test. And then every time you test it, somebody says something that makes you tweak an element of the game and or they say or something happens that's never happened before and you're like oh my god i gotta fix the instructions and yeah. so it was a mammoth effort it really was a good six to nine months really getting the game to where it is wow so yeah it's a big it's an ordeal and that's why you don't see a lot of i guess i guess you do now you see a lot of horror games now you know but i have the thing game i have the shining game i have um i have a couple <laughs> of the horror games I don't play them because they take so long to figure out how, like I to read the instructions. You're like, how can I play this game? I mean, it's going to take me two hours just to learn it. And I'm not dinging the game, but I wanted to create a more simple game that wasn't as easy. It's simple, but not that easy. So that's, yeah. That's, I know there's a lot of information I threw no, no, no. at you, but that's, that's what awesome. went into it. And we're going to jump over to the novel in just a second. But, but Anthony, before we do, if for people who want to see how to play the game, you've made a video, haven't okay. you? Like how to play the game. We're going to be yeah, going to find that. Um, if you go to stopthekiller.com, there's a how to play section. And you can kind of, I'm sitting like in the same chair with the same lighting and everything. And I just basically bring you through how to play the game. And so mm -hmm. if you watch that video, you'll be ready to play. You just take the game out and you can, you can play. Which leads me to one more question, then I'm going to throw it back to Luke. Stop the Killer Games. Can you? What is that? So Stop the Killer is a partnership between me and Ben over at Fright Rags. And so what they bring is, I mean, look at the box. I mean, this is their, this is what they're bringing. They're bringing their incredible artists. I mean, look at that artwork. I mean, so it's amazing. Like but like, that's what they're doing. They're, they, the board, the whole board was designed by them. I mean, I know, I know that credited the factory, but 
they did the design on it. So they're doing all the illustrations. Um, that's, that's what they're bringing. And, uh, I was so eager to partner with them because I'm such a huge fan of them. And, and I knew them because they were doing some shirts for silent night, deadly night. And um, that's how I was able to make the connection. And so it's just a really great team. And we're doing, an, we're doing another game next. Like it's Halloween two. We're announcing Halloween two. Um, that's definitely, I saw the artwork last week. I, I'm so excited about this game. I'm like, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's a double sided board. So you get like, the first side is the stock side. So there are no kills on it. There's no kill zones on it, but you see Michael stalking and he's, you see a picture of him behind the lost river drive-in remember in the movie, it's like, yeah. the lost river drive -in. Um, but then when you flip it, you're in the hospital and it's all of his famous kills, the hot tub, you know, the scene and all of that. So it's going to have a lot of artwork on it. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a great partnership and that's what stop the killer is. All right. Hey, Luke, Go ahead. Now, did you have anybody that like, was actually like part of the film involved in the game or people from the film? Have they played the game yet? I know you had some people at the signings and I all don't that. know. They all have the game. I know oh, nice. that. Um, so Michael Hickey, who wrote Silent Night, Deadly Night, got a copy of it and he wrote a glowing email to Scott, who owns the license. He's like, this is so fun. It's great. Uh, the people who made it obviously love the movie. Uh, I gave copies to all the My Bloody Valentine people, all the producers. Um, George was very involved in um, the look of it. And I, mean, I, I, brought, I had a Zoom with him and I was giving him a tutorial of how to play the game. And, you know, my heart's pounding because I'm like, what if he hates it? You know, and wait, wait, wait. Like, George, I love it. George who? George Mahalka, the director of My Bloody Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> I needed his blessing. I was no way I was going to put out a game, you know, without him, you know, liking it and uh and so they, i talked to them this morning they just they're just like this is so great you know i sent them a huge box of games and novels and we had beer koozies that say that say who um who, uh, what is it uh who ordered the moose head you know like you can put on your beer it's like who ordered the moose right Wait, there there it is, <laughs> there, who ordered the moose? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> my moose head right yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, I think when you put your passion to something like yeah. this, you know, it's one thing, to, like, I love Ben, and they, he creates t-shirts and stuff, but they do other amazing things like figurines, and, you know, it um, it's one thing to do to do a t-shirt. It's another thing to create an experience, so you could watch the movie and play the game, and it's, it's a whole new thing, you know, and I've done that many times. I've test played it myself many times to make sure it's, you know, working, so. I can't wait to play it. So let's talk a little bit about the novelization, the tie-in, the official novelization of the film, Armando. So you actually also, speaking of George Malka, you were able to, I'm going to, you know, wait, if you can hold that up for a second, I'm going to pull it up a little bit larger here. Yeah. You were um, able to work directly and get the blessing of the director, George Malka, on the book. And you actually had him write the foreword. Can you talk a little bit about working with him and uh, kind of what he thought of your project? Well, you know, to get this project, I had to have the full blessing of George. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had to come in with an approach, with a solid approach to what I wanted to do with the novel and um, all my ambitions with it. And I kind of pitched my take on what I would like to do. And thankfully, he and I were completely on the same page from the from the beginning. Like, I, it was really an incredible thing to find and work with him because we were really on the same page on what we wanted to accomplish. And so, um, you know, number one, I think what we were trying to do was deliver the full version of what George intended with the original movie, which is, um, which was heavily cut, you know, as we know by the ratings board and just by the studio for time constraints. And so he always, felt like he didn't get to put his best version forward. And doing a novelization was kind of a way to fix that or just to put out, you know, his idea of what this could have been. Make it a bigger piece, make it more, not only give us those, you know, all the censored scenes that we're still waiting for, but expand the characters, expand the history of the location, um, strengthen the legend of Harry Warden and bring it back to life in a, in an exciting and satisfying way. And I've long been collecting 
and reading novelizations. Basically, since 1983, um, Return of the Jedi was my first. But 40th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after, I was collecting all the Friday the 13th novels that Paramount put out, and then the Halloween novels, and anything that would come come out, you know, Fright Night and Reanimator <laughs> and Poltergeist and Lost Boys. And I was, you know, they're all still on my shelf. You know, so I've been reading the form for decades. And, you know, I know what I've kind of been campaigning. I've been wanting to take my shot at the form and see, you know, tackle that kind of challenge. Lucky me that it, I end up getting one, you know, a favorite film of my favorite subgenre of horror, which is basic, basically um, holiday and theme day slasher films are so many of them are among my favorite films of all time. Like, I don't think I have a favorite a more favorite subgenre than that. And My Bloody Valentine is one of the most respected titles there. And I have nothing but deep, deep love for it. So, you know, I could approach this book as uh, a labor of love, you know, a passion project. This was a big deal for yeah. me. I love the characters, every single character. I love it. And being able to write this, I got to be them. I got to be all of them. Yeah. And see what makes them tick and give us a lot more material with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we like, as Anthony said, we just, we didn't just stick to, you know, expanding it with the screenplay. We really went all out to deliver new big scares and, That's awesome. and things that will all feel completely organic mm -hmm. to my bloody Valentine. And any of the things could have been, potentially in that original screenplay. And I, and I got to say, there was a ton of stuff that didn't make it to the screen. Not just I violence. know Luke wants to talk to you about that in just one second, but we have a mm -hmm. guest who just wants to say hello real quick. Oh, yes. Hey, guys. Hey, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Good to see you guys. You too. It's great to you see you. You had a big weekend at uh, CreepyCon. I did. I had a really really huge, busy weekend. I'm very grateful, but I'm sorry I missed you guys. I would have loved to have been there. I kept telling my friends, I'm like, oh my God. It's like, talk <laughs> about the worst possible timing, but look what I got. Yes! <laughs> and, it's so, and You guys went to the trouble of having it so beautifully signed. It looks so great. And oh uh, look at that. Oh, nice. man. Oh, I got God. I got two copies actually. Believe it or not, I got two <laughs> copies. One for your left hand, one for your right hand. <laughs> no, actually, one for my place in LA and one for my place in Houston. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. And I, I'm picking up I'm picking up my game uh, tomorrow from Dark Delicacy. So uh, oh, I'm really cool. proud of you guys, Armando. I can't wait to read this. Great artist, great uh, gr great author, and uh, Anthony. You know, we've known each other for a while, and uh, We've always supported one another. He's a great guy. So uh, just want to let you know, you guys are great. I support you and everything you do. And I'm so excited for the game and for the book. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. A heart for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> Mark, thanks for stopping by. Uh, you feel free to pop back in if you want to join the conversation, man. Thanks. Just one thing I want to share with you guys, only because to show you what a big fan I am, right? So this was a huge, even though I was in Ontario doing a convention, uh, my heart and soul was with you guys because I had been waiting for about five years to find one of these. And I, you can see from behind me, I, I collect insert posters. You can't really see because it's cut off with the camera. But I finally scored this, an original insert. Wow. That's a hard size to find. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful condition. So... Uh, just wanted to share that with you guys, and oh, I hope cool. to see you guys around soon. Uh, I miss you Absolutely. guys. I haven't seen you guys since before the pandemic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so congratulations. So I, I, I'm really excited, like I said, to, to read the book and uh, play the game. All right. Well, Thank you, enjoy, Mark, so much. Enjoy. Let me know what you think of it. I will. Absolutely. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thanks, Mark. Bye. That was pretty cool. All oh, right. Awesome. Cheeseman, you uh, – Cheeseman, you had some questions about... Yeah, I just uh, want to hear a little bit more about the book. Like, what are some of these scenes that were cut from the movie that you added back in in the book? Or, like, what are some of the your most favorite moments from it that you're most proud of? Okay, well, um, so far as stuff that had been cut from the script, it, it was really incredible. I At first, I started writing out a list 
of how many extended or cut scenes I was finding. And then I just stopped after two dozen. And it was just, they kept coming. And it's really incredible how much didn't make it to the film, you know, but they were constrained by that 90 minute running time that was most profitable for the theaters and studios, you know, for that kind of film, you know, you could have two and a half hours if you're The Shining, but not if you're a holiday slasher, you're, you're, look, you're stuck to your 90 minutes. And the changes were all throughout, just, it was constant. And a, a good example would be um, the scene of the apology on the bluffs between uh, TJ and Sarah, where, you know, he finally apologizes for abandoning town and abandoning her. And she kind of accepts it. And they have this romantic kiss against the Technicolor sunset. And then the scene cuts. Um, that's what we had all seen. The script just went on and on. It turns into a fight and she leaves them there on the bluffs and she decides to walk back to town and he speeds off and it gets dark out and she has to take a detour through the local cemetery. Guess who happens to be there lurking behind some tombstones, but the miner, you know, who can now come out and stalk her into the night. Like it, it is such a radically different direction that was just completely missing you know, from the film, but, and it was just, the whole script was, reading it was like that. Um, so many different directions and so many pieces uh, filled in. Um, there's like, and great slasher sequences that uh, people would have loved so much. Um, even s more simple things like uh, Chief Newbie, um, when he finally does get to the mine at the end to, uh, to uh, start the rescue. But there's a part where he goes in to um, the recreation room where the party was abandoned and discovers a body and things like that. Like, oh, these are great, you know, moments that uh, that I think everybody's going to want to see. So it, it all comes back. But, you know, it's also the juicy stuff like the double murder um, of the copulating couple. <laughs> we didn't get to see that, know, that footage. That footage was completely lost. Um, yeah, that's gone. That footage is nowhere to be found. Yeah. The, the footage that didn't make it back into the film that was violence-based was really the most extreme um, sex and violence mixed yeah. stuff. That was the stuff that, you know, the MPA totally got their panties in a bunch about. And so those I scenes were was, so cut and missing still. Like it, it, it was at first rated X because of the violence and mixed in, but also because this was the year after the original Friday the 13th and Paramount was just kind of skittish because they got a lot of blowback for the amount of oh, violence totally. they put in that film. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, they they there was some public blowback and they knew they were kind of at the mercy then of the ratings board and you know the ratings board just they were furious. You know, as furious as Siskel and Ebert about this subgenre of film and they wanted to punish <laughs> as Mother Superior might say. And uh, <laughs> they did it with All scissors. those old Cisco and Ebert reviews are amazing. If you haven't seen like the Friday 13th, the Silent Night, Deadly Night, like go watch them. You will like drink, have a couple of drinks and watch them. It's even better. <laughs> it's <amazing. laughs> but we get to bring you know, all this stuff back into the book. And like with that double murder scene, George described what he shot shot for shot he gave me every nasty little detail yeah so i could totally get it right <laughs> and present what he wanted us to see but there's so much more like i and i don't want to hint at some of the you know soon enough a lot of people will have read the book and these moments will be known it'll be like the shower kill or something and we can talk about it but at this point there's just a lot of big gruesome moments that are about to hopefully shock and thrill a lot of horror fans at least the ones who are able to get this first edition for this valentine's day you know so we're again just uh giving you a real it, knowing that we have no uh mpaa to contend with we were able to make this the bloodiest <laughs> and it's strongest bloody. version of my bloody right. valentine ever and it really goes there these tunnels are flooded with blood so it's it's exciting. <laughs> Anthony, hey, but how does it, like, I mean, does the book go hand in hand with the board game? I mean, how does it? Well, yeah, well, that's how I had timed things. You know, I, um, I, you know, we got the board game gig and I was working on it and 
I, you know, just one day I said, Hey, you know, cause I, Armando's a good friend. He's a fantastic writer. And I just said to the licensor, I said, how would you guys feel about a, a novel, you know, for, for my bloody Valentine. And they were like, that's a really good idea. I mean, it's a tie in novel to a movie that came out in 1981. So it's like, well, why, why would you like, that's really odd. You know, it's like, who does that these days? <laughs> so, um, right. But he, this was a chance for George to kind of get the movie he wanted and let's face it, you know, they've already assembled an unrated, you know, an uncut version of it, but things are still missing. Right. This was a chance for him to kind of get at least an expression of the vision he had in a really new immersive way. And so I said, well, I've got a Kickstarter running for the board game. I've very engaged my Bloody Valentine fans. They'll probably buy it. Um, and I have the Stop the Killer website where I can sort of do a pre-order and it did really well. And so everybody wanted it. And I saw everyone adding it to their order in Kickstarter. So we were like, okay, we're on, we're doing this. This is going to be great. And it started off as a soft cover. It went to hardcover. There's a chapter in it that you cannot get in any other edition. So, and it's like the best chapter is so freaking amazing. <laughs> the chapter is so great. And like, you know, so we added that, we added the bookmark. It's autographed by Armando and George. I mean, they we, we sent book plates to Canada for George. George signed all these book plates and they had to mail them to Armando and he signed them and I had to go pick them up and then put each one in an envelope. It was a nightmare, but I mean, um, it really just took on a life. So yeah, I think they go hand in hand. I think people are going to be reading the book right now, this week. They're probably reading the book, playing the game, you know, and that's, you know, it's just it's two ways to experience, you know, the the uh, the movie in a yeah. new way. Yeah, and we're kind of bumping up towards the end here. I know, Luke, you have a couple more questions, but before he does, where can pe so we don't forget where can people buy the book and, and or the game? <laughs> well, this is the thing. <laughs> The book sold and it's out. It's sold out. It's I think it's already a collector's item. S O L. And, Are you kidding? I know. I just I um we that's we awesome. we um th that's what my conversation was with the licensor today was you know my company has not published books before and this was a will people care kind of project and resoundingly the answer was yes and so uh, so we will be doing another printing for sure um, what that will be I don't know because we made a promise to our Kickstarter or to, to this first edition people that it you know it's not it's going to have a, a chapter that won't be available and so Armando we're going to be talking about what to do and all of that um, the game right now is the Kickstarter is over so if you go to stopthekiller.com, the best you can do is just sign up for our mailing list. However, um, to, to be alerted of new games and everything, but we will be attending Midsummer Scream. So my, Stop the Killer will have a booth at Midsummer Scream at the end of July, and that's in Long Beach. Yep. And we will have all of our surplus inventory for Silent Night, Deadly Night and My Bloody Valentine there. So we're hoping to offload it all right there, and it's a great place to do that. Um, and we're going to have a new game we're announcing there which is after Halloween 2. I've already got the next game set up there, and we're going to be announcing it at Midsummer Scream. Um, and you can take pre-orders for... Oh, I was going to say the name of the next book, but... Uh, <laughs> Wait, we're almost I'll there. I'll let Armando do that. I'll let Armando do that. We're almost there. Almost there. Jeez, okay. a couple quick questions, and then we got to jump over to that. Okay. I'd just like to know from both the book and the game, was there a favorite line that you're just so happy to include either on the game or in the book that's just a favorite from the original film? I'm looking through my cards right now. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be more than one. Well, I mean, the whole thing is like, you know, all the cards have different lines and everything. Um, you know, like there's a line, she wants to come back with me. Like in the movie, remember that? Like, like that's a, like, it starts a fight and everything. Yeah. So what we did with the cards was we tried to create, uh, we tried to, Wait a second. Let me get reference something from the movie. Like, for instance, on this card, it says, you know, she wants to come back with me. But then there's an action on the card. And this is to swap your spot with another player. And that can cause that can be a good thing or a bad thing. So we tried to one of the challenges of the game was to find references from the movie that somehow in inform the action of the card. So that's that's kind of what I did. So like, um, you know, you got stabbed, right? There's that scene where they're doing that knife knife 
jumping yeah. game, right? So it's like you got stabbed. Well, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your weapon, you know. Uh, so there's a lot of those things in these in these cards. I, I don't know. I, happy is like Happy and Mabel are my two favorite characters. I love Mabel. She's amazing. What Armando's done with Mabel in the book is like mind blowing. You're going to love it. Do you um, think that scene uh, influenced that scene in Alien that later came? The same scene with the knife in the hand and all that. Probably. <laughs> I've thought that before. Probably, you know. Was I mean, I've never played that. I would never. Would you guys play that game? I would never play that game. <laughs> I like my fingers just the way they are. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think my favorite exchange in the film, um, which is in the book as well, but just the delivery in the film is so. I don't know how, but every single time I just bust out laughing out loud. And it's in. It's one of the scenes in the bar between um, Happy and Howard. Where he's oh. where he just where Happy just yells out, "Shut up, you little asshole!" <laughs> <laughs> and Howard's all, "Who you?" <laughs> like I don't know what it is, but that gets me every time. I love Howard; he's so funny in the film, and he has so much personality, which you know we've all heard and learned now. Came from the actor himself. You know, these actors brought themselves to those characters, and. Apparently what we saw on screen with Howard is what he was. And he, everybody was totally endeared to Alf Humphreys who um, played him. And he was, he was so much fun to write as was Mabel, like Mabel and happy are also my favorite characters. And they have a whole chapter early in the book. That's not nothing in the yeah. film, but yeah, I was able to establish them both early as um, important residents in the town. And they have a history and a feud and, um, it really sets us up nicely to what comes after. Mm -hmm. um, but Howard in particular, he's, he was so much fun to be and write because, I mean, we know his all of his jokes, but right. he had to be as funny on the page in ways we weren't expecting. And so he gets to be funnier in a way. And, and to be able to do that, holy cow, that's, that's unreal. Yeah. So I'm going to, um, before I throw it back to Luke, and then we got to kind of end it here. Mark does want to jump back in real quick. Mark, Mark has a question for you guys. <laughs> I just typed it, but I'm just curious. That theme song, The Legend of Harry Warden, it's iconic. It's uh, it's one of those jingles that did you guys in any way incorporate that into the game or the book or anything or reference it? Absolutely for the novel. Oh it's nice. a big part of the novel. Oh um, great. In particular, on the this first edition hardcover with Gary Pullen on the back of the first uh, cover, uh -huh. we have some oh, of the Ballad of Harry Warden with the lyrics. Oh, wow. That was at George's and, insistence. Because normally it, in the back of the book, you would have like a summary of the book, you know, or whatever. And George said, no, I want the lyrics, at least part of the lyrics on the back. And so we did it. But yeah. then we have the second cover underneath. That yeah. one has a... A synopsis on the back. Oh, okay. Wow. But okay. with within wow. the story itself, yes, the yeah. actual song is in the story and has its own chapter. It has its own chapter. Um, wow. That okay. explains the song and how it came to be within the world of My Bloody Valentine. Wow. Even the music in the movie is worked plot wise into the book. So, um, oh yeah, there's no way I I was insistent that the ballad of Harry Warden. Yeah, I remember. I remember George wanting to have story. a big conversation with you about it. I remember he was like, "Let's talk about this," because it was like, "You know, how do you, you know, it's part of the movie. You sit through the credits, right? I do. Like, I need, I need to hear that song. Yeah, it's part of the, okay. you know. And yes, the ballad is also in. Uh, it's in. We have a trivia, um, like a tr uh, trivia <laughs> expansion, and it's referenced in there. So right. cool. Yeah. It's a cool song. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Right, thanks, you guys. See All you. Right, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. All right, Cheeseman, we're going to um, kind of let you wrap us up with uh, your, your final questions here. Okay. Uh, yeah, my final question is just with this book coming out, like, would you be excited in the future if this, like, inspired, like, another take of the film now, including these scenes and you building this world out even more? Or even, like, maybe something well, like a graphic novel the, or something? Wasn't there a sequel that almost got made? Oh, yeah. 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 What I can say is that uh, for many years, George has had a desire to do uh, his own follow up to My Bloody Valentine. And it, for whatever reason, it hasn't um, gotten off the ground. And yet this legend just keeps getting stronger and his desire remains. So um, before I started writing this novelization, um, he told me 
what his sequel was. He went through it and told me exactly what his aim was and what his story was mm -hmm. in his follow-up. And he told me that so I could work threads and clues of it into this novelization. So we have kind of set up Woo! the seeds of what George's official follow-up would be within this book, this first novelization. And, you know, of course, we hope that um, there is enough interest and that the audience, you know, will demand it, whether it's in... That I'm, would of course, we would love great. a film, yeah. but maybe it needs to be a novel first to get the interest <laughs> for that. Like, we don't know what way it'll go, but, you know, we kind of hope that, you know, we're part of a, um, a My Bloody Valentine resurgence that incorporates the director, that gives him the ability to mm -hmm. do the sequel that he has long desired to do. And I tell you, I just freaked out over his idea. I'm so on board and into it. If he would have me back, um, Brandon, we had a very nice and successful and easy collaboration here. Hopefully this could all lead to another my bloody valentine so anthony Jordan. could the game expand to include another valentine <laughs> they like i don't know like another expansion pack it's like <laughs> a new level of play or something i don't know i don't know do board games have sequels i don't know i'm learning yeah, i have no connect idea the two boards uh, together somehow the, no, yeah, them in oh, wow. new characters new questions added that would be kind of yeah. cool I, I will think about it if i can do it you know <laughs> That's awesome. Amazing. Anthony's like, I'm just barely recovering from getting this thing out the door. I know. Oh my God. It's like giving birth. It's like when, it, when the game went out, it was like, it's done. You know, like now I got really nervous because, you know, it's like now it's in everyone's hands. Now they're playing it, you know, and I'm tagged on all the Instagrams and people are saying, oh, it's fun. It's so fun. We did two rounds tonight and we drank our beer. And like, you know, it's just that to me means the world to me because I mean, the, the objective was fun. I just wanted to create fun for around the game so cool. yeah cheese man yeah i mean that, that was oh sorry my <laughs> no, I, okay well listen guys i can't think of a better way to kick off valentine week yeah. than this but i do know that before the show anthony you mentioned something kind of cool it sounds like you guys are had just a great day today as well not only did you have a great event not only did you sell out but what's the announcement that you have Right, well, I'll let Armando announce Armando. it. I mean, like what I told you, everybody, like, everyone watching is I, 10 minutes before <laughs> the podcast, Armando had emailed me something and basically cementing the, the title of the next novel. So, yes, we have our next novelization of a classic 80 slasher lined up, and it is now officially a go. And, um, I'm already kind of there up here. As soon as I come out of the Hanager mine, I will be going um, to another holiday. I'm going to be going to Christmas as since I will be doing the official novelization of Silent Night, Deadly Night, the infamous sl 80s slasher classic that got pulled from theaters and is now an incredible board game from Stop the Killer, um, which, Perfect. by the way, I played twice on Christmas Eve. And we killed, we killed Billy twice. You told me you killed Billy <laughs> twice. <laughs> right. Awesome. It was so awesome. But that, he might kill me this year. I don't know. But I'm oh, about to become Billy. And I'm going to become all of them. And we're going to do this again and see. Uh, yep. This, see and by the way, this so magic you know, strike he was, again. He was supposed to do this one first. And for whatever reason, you know, it didn't happen. And, and we did my bloody valentine and now it just kind of flip-flopped and it seems kind of neat like maybe that's the stop the killer formula it's like we do a game and a novel and a game and a novel you know it just it just it's new ways to experience the film so I, I just tell you i am i'm so excited that you guys are keeping the like the, these fandoms these films alive these films you know like i, I I'm a little bit older, probably the most of you guys. I remember those spending those Friday nights in the VHS store, and I, you see these crazy covers, and you know yeah. now that when we came into the age of streaming, like whatever happened to all these cool movies? You know, if you didn't buy them then, and you, this is awesome that you guys are doing this. And, and Anthony, I, I know you that you love these horror movies, and I, I just love that you're yeah. keeping them alive. Armando, so great to meet you guys. This you has too, been so are. great. Let me again wish you happy Valentine's week. Also, let me be All the right. first to wish you Merry Christmas. It sounds like it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Where can people find out more information about what you're working on or any kind of announcements, Armando? Um, 
right now, the easiest way to follow me is on the socials, which would be uh, Facebook under Armando Munoz, um, Twitter Armando D. Munoz, which was the, I put the initial, middle initial on my name on my mm -hmm. first three books. But now with my bloody Valentine, I'm just going, I, I took that initial out. But that's my Twitter handle. And uh, on Instagram, it's Pervula1. Uh, of course, Pervula being that short film, my infamous old short film. And you can find me every weekend broadcasting dance music live on Dance Darklings. I'm actually this Friday night, uh, 10 p.m. to midnight, I'll be doing my official My Bloody Valentine set of nice. music and make it a <laughs> valentine themed party this friday night on dance darklings and so just follow any of my socials you'll find all these uh events and announcements and links and i hope to see people there and hear and start hearing what they think of the book it's a scary position to, <laughs> at this point <laughs> where you're just you know people are turning the pages and those big moments are just about to become known and uh um, yeah it's awesome. well it is exciting it's an exciting valentine's day this year for sure what about you anthony where can people yeah. find out what you you're working on you know it's all about board games right now so just go to stopthekiller.com and you'll find you'll find me there i have my instagram link my facebook link all of that so fantastic cool. and you can find me at james d fry on instagram cheeseman why don't you tell people where people can find you and take us out uh, you can find me on instagram and twitter at cheese on couch and also on the scareguy.com Thank you, everybody, for watching. Check out the book and the game, and uh, we will be talking more about this soon and more upcoming things from these awesome guys. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's